Hi, I'm Michelle Neville. At Spirit of Newfoundland, we're going strong with our musical comedy, event planning, and catering. We're the St. John's Event of the Year, and now we have daily screechings right here in our new screech room. Spirit of Newfoundland, a proud sponsor of One Chef, One Critic. Focused on quality and convenience, there isn't much you won't find at Marie's Mini Mart. Homestyle bread, sandwiches, plus a variety of artisan breads and delicious single-serve desserts available exclusively at our Frecker Drive location. Marie's Mini Mart, with 25 locations wherever you go, there we are. Yellow Belly Food means fresh food. We source our ingredients locally and prepare them from scratch. Our meat is never frozen. Food's so delicious, we've got Good Times Corner. Yellow Belly Brewery, a proud sponsor of One Chef, One Critic. Cow, what is all this mess? How many times have I told you, clean as you go, clean as you go? Okay, right, Steve, right out, clean as you go. You clean, I'll go. Yum, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yum. Yum, 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 yum. Yum, yum. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of One Chef, One Critic. I'm Carl Wells, food critic for the Telegram. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Dairies. And Stephen, I have heard you say, clean as you go, clean as you go, clean as you go, so many. If mm -hmm. I had a dollar for every time I've heard you say that. <laughs> this is like a mantra with you, but why is it so important that we clear and clean as we are preparing our meals. Absolutely, Cal. Well, look at this. All this mess right here. How can we think of our task at hand when we've got all this? What I would be doing is clean as I'm going. I would have a spatula or something like this. And I would have a vessel to the side of me and really clean it up to, and then be thinking of our ta next task on the recipe. So let's get all that cleaned up. Now look at that beautiful board. Now we can move on to, it could be produce, it could be seafood, it could be poultry or whatever the case may be. So it really, by keeping a clear, clean work surface, it helps you kind of focus on the task at hand. hand. Exactly. And, and you're not at all distracted by the mess you're creating as you're going through <laughs> the preparation of the meal. And, and in the end, working on a small quarter yeah. of the board. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, you're right. It's a very important thing. So clean as you go, folks. Coming up on the program today, we have meteorologist Ryan Snodden of CBC's Here and Now with us. And what are we going to be preparing for Ryan? Today we're going to be making a traditional French dish, a beef bourguignon, and we're going to be serving that in an Idaho potato. Oh my mm. goodness, that sounds delicious. Uh, also, we have Chef Michel LeBlanc with us from Chinched Bistro. And Michel is going to show us how to make a, a really classic dessert called Baked Alaska. They're coming back, apparently, so stay tuned. For a complete listing of One Chef, One Critic recipes, wine lists, and more, check out our website. Let us know what you think of the show at 757-9600. Musical comedy, daily screeching, food, and space for special events. We celebrate your spirit at Spirit of Newfoundland, proud sponsor of One Chef, One Critic. Marie's Mini Mart is homemade convenience in your neighborhood. We offer freshly baked artisan breads and single serve desserts made from scratch, available exclusively at our in store bakery on Fricker Drive. Yellow Belly Food means fresh food and handcrafted beer. Yellow Belly Brewery and Public House, we've got good times cornered. Yellow Belly Brewery is a proud sponsor of One Chef, One Critic. And here we are with Ryan Snodden of Here and Now. And welcome to One Chef, One Critic, Ryan. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, guys. Excellent. Well, Excellent. our pleasure. So, tell Ryan what we're going to be making. It's a special dish, just uh, for him. Absolutely, absolutely. Ryan, I know you have a very busy lifestyle, and uh, normally a beef bourguignon is a, is a slow-cooked meal. Uh, but today we're actually going to be making it with a beef tenderloin. We're going to be sautéing that off mm -hmm. with a little bit of red wine sauce. And Carl is going to be sautéing some uh, ladons of uh, slab bacon, some pearl onions, and some mushrooms. So uh, <laughs> let's get started then, shall nice. we? Nice. Perfect. Okay. I'll just cut the last of the uh, tenderloin up, and then we will put a little bit of paprika, a little bit of oil in the pan, and then I'll get you to start stirring it. Sounds good. Perfect. This, this, this is going to be noisy. I can, I, can, I can just tell we're going to have lots of sizzles here. There we go. Driving the uh, audio guy crazy. But, uh, can't be helped, I guess. Then we'll just put a little bit of oil in there, and then I'll give that to you, and you can pop that into the pan as well. That's all, right. all for you. And okay. I'll, I'll get on with the mushrooms uh, off just the board. Yeah, and just be, be gentle when you put it in. Maybe, maybe you should try, try doing it don't, this way. Don't just, don't just yeah, dump it upside down. You know down. what? All of that oil is going to... 
splash back on you. Yeah, that You're, would not I be good. I don't need to be taking over your duties, Ryan. Okay. I don't want you to get hurt. No, we don't, we don't want any injuries on the set I'm, the, no. I'm actually the self, a health and safety officer on this set. <laughs> <laughs> so you, uh, you hail from away, as we say in Newfoundland. Tell us about um, where you were born and brought up. Well, uh, I was uh, born and raised on, fittingly, a beef farm. Uh, in Ontario, so, um, and now actually it was my grandparents, it was my great grandparents farm first of all, and then my grandparents farm, and uh, when I was about 10 years old, my dad officially took it over. Yeah. So, uh, don't go, don't go. it's generations, it's been in the family for generations. And actually my great grandfather bought it from his uncle, so the, the, it's a hand -me -down. It, it is, the farm has been uh, in the Snowden family name since uh, the late 1800, 1880s, I believe. Wow. So just uh, great, give us an idea awesome. geographically, where is it situated? Uh, if we're looking at a map of Ontario. Uh, so if you picture Toronto, it's almost directly straight north of Toronto. There's, if you look at the Great Lakes, there's a little, there's a lake, Lake Simcoe is in the middle of the Great Lakes there. Uh, west of Peterborough, Barrie is right on the lake. Right. And it's, uh, the farm's just on the south side of Lake Simcoe. So yeah. it's farm country. Yeah. It's rural. So rural that, uh, we live on Snodden Road. Right. So, uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to check to see if I can get our street named uh, Wells Drive or something. Oh, I, I think um, you'd have no problem there. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, tell me about, uh, you know, the beef farm. Uh, is it just beef you raise? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, now, when my dad was growing up, they had, you know, they had some pigs and chickens yeah. and, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, farming's kind of a kind of came a, a kind of a tough bracket to, to make a living, especially if you weren't like a big operator. Right. In the eighties yeah. and nineties. Yeah. Uh, so my dad actually is uh, is a full time lineman and a full time farmer. One of those. I so, am a lineman for the county. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, so you know, it, it, he definitely he had some help with three boys. Yes, of course. So yeah. the four of us That's kind of uh, kept it. Uh, Kept it going. Kept it going, and uh, yeah, we, we, we now have about uh, a 40 head of cattle uh, oh, okay. at, at, at all times, usually about 20 cows, 20 calves. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So is it true that you try to get home about three times a year to help on the farm? Yeah, definitely. And it's funny, every time I'm home, there's some kind of big project to be done. <laughs> <laughs> Conveniently, yeah. So, are you there when, like, uh, to help with the birthing of the calves? And uh, usually, yeah. I always try and get home in the spring um, for a trip home, and anywhere from you know March through till till June, there are, there are yeah. calves kind of on yeah. on the way. So, definitely, so, I've delivered my fair share of calves. Oh, really? So, oh yeah. So, uh, what's that like? <laughs> uh, that it's interesting. It's interesting when you're. When you're, uh, uh, you know, 10, 12 yeah. uh, years old or even a teenager, you don't really think about it too much, yeah. what you're actually being yeah. asked to do. But, uh, yeah, you know, sometimes uh, there's some complications and, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. the, the, the calf's too big. So, you know, you put her in the barn and, and uh, tie the cow up and oh, wow. go in with a rope and tie the rope around the calf's oh, legs. Oh, and, and And, you know, give her, give her a hand to, wow. to deliver. So, wow. Yeah. But you kind of have to be a bit of a veterinarian too, don't you? You learn a lot. You yeah. definitely learn a lot. Yeah. Uh, so I, I guess there wasn't much to tell you about the facts of life. No. <laughs> no, definitely <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a definitely an interesting uh, childhood yeah. growing up for sure. Yeah. So then you decided to get into broadcasting. Well, yeah, that's um, you know my first big uh, love for sure was uh, was was broadcasting. I love I love hockey, love sports. Mm -hmm. um, I also you know love news. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, I being born and raised on a farm, I love the weather. So yeah. I, I decided to take journalism first. So that's right. why I went to yeah. uh, to Loyalist in in, uh, in Belleville, yeah. uh, just down the road and from uh, from the farm there. And and so yeah, that was really my first yeah. job was reporting uh, radio TV. Radio or? TV. And then I landed a job on a, on the morning show in Peterborough mm -hmm. on a rock station. Mm -hmm. Which was a very cool job, <laughs> other than other than getting up at uh, three thirty in the yes, morning. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, other than that, it was it was a really really cool job. Yes. One of the drawbacks of uh, early morning radio. Oh, can I just get you pop, pop the mushrooms in there as well? Oh That'd yes, be great. of course. Yes, certainly. There you go. Consider them popped. How's okay. that doing, Steve? Am I Perfect. Doing, uh, 
I'm Absolutely, you're doing great. So yeah, don't, don't, do? don't worry about hurting my feelings. No. If, uh, <laughs> so is it true that your brother is in broadcasting as well? Yeah, he, uh, yeah, he took journalism, took radio, uh, and uh, still trying to kind of get into the biz. But uh, yeah, he's... He's, he's also he's younger than you. Or? He's younger than me. Okay. Yeah, he's just uh, so he's following in Big Brother's footsteps. That's right. He wants to be Ryan. <laughs> like uh, I, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I, I thought uh, all uh, I could could have discouraged him by now, yeah. but he's, he's still going for it. So so I guess your folks can uh, can watch you on TV up there. That's one of the beauty things yeah. about technology That's now. Right. Yeah, they yeah. have uh, they have a satellite dish. Yeah, so yeah. excellent. The 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 okay. time. Change doesn't exactly work out no, uh, all the right. time, but yeah. uh, whenever they've got a PVR now, oh, so excellent. they're okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right, and okay. it's usually they're they're talking about, you know, yeah. oh, you're you're still delivering the bad the bad weather <laughs> <laughs> this time of year, right? <laughs> all right, what I'm going to quickly do now, I'm just going to put a little bit of cognac in there, and we'll nice. see if we can get a little bit of a flame on there. Ooh, there oh, we go. Perfect. Look at that. Nice. There Ooh. we go. Congratulations. Bravo. Yeah, bravo. Bravo. Yeah. Yeah. So we just kind of let that the, did, we'll, Yeah, we're just going to let that off. burn off now. And then, uh, Carl, we'll just put a little bit of the red wine sauce in there as well. We'll put a label okay. of that in there now. So that's going to kind of give it just that extra little bit of flavor, yeah, that, that je ne sais quoi. Absolutely. Okay. Very nice. But yes. There that's we go. Now, now, that's good. Perfect. I'm so delighted that we picked a beef dish because, you know, we've got a beef farmer here. I, I, thought, I thought you picked it on <laughs> oh, no, purpose. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no. The ultimate would have been Absolutely. a dairy farmer, but yeah. <laughs> all, I, all I was thinking was, Ryan's coming on the show, we should cook something really nice for him, right? <laughs> oh, nice. And I figured you were kind of a meat and potatoes yeah, guy, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so there you go. Yeah. What was it like uh, transitioning from the Ontario culture to Newfoundland? That must have been uh, an adjustment. Uh, definitely an adjustment, but you know, I think the thing I love uh, about here the most is that, especially St. John's, you're in the city, two seconds later, yeah. you're in oh, the country. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Pippi yeah. Park is right there, yeah. uh, Butterpot Park. You literally have to drive 10 minutes out of the city and you're in the middle of nowhere, yeah. which is... And the spot of the ocean. And, and that's right, yeah. the ocean yeah. is right next door as that, well. That's so right. this is yeah. what, that's what makes yeah. this city uh, really appealing to me. I'm gonna go to the wine cellar okay, and nice. find a nice bottle of wine. In the meantime, you guys can talk about how difficult it was for you to get used to the Newfoundland dialect. <laughs> Perhaps a little more so for you than me, right? I came here for some education, and I fit quite in. So. Hi, it's great Hi, to Kat. see you, you too. Andrea Monder Bacalao. Well, we have a French-inspired dish, I guess. Uh, well, essentially, I think it's a beef bourguignon, mm -hmm. <laughs> beef and burgundy. Um, so I'm thinking uh, a, a pretty uh, robust wine to go with this. What Absolutely, do you think? Absolutely, yeah. And we've got it in baked potatoes. Oh, so yes. we're having a little yeah. bit more of a casual approach to it. Yes. So rather than go with a wine from Burgundy, which is, of course, the Pinot Noir region of France, mm -hmm. we've gone with Pinot Noirs and something a little different, um, but from other regions of the world. Okay. So we're going to start with the Pili Island Pinot Noir Reserve, one of my favorites. I love this winery. I love the winemaker. love the owner. They just do a wonderful job. Amazing price points and super great value. This is a Pinot Noir Reserve mm -hmm. from Pili Island. Mm -hmm. Very sustainable on Pili Island because they're in a nature reserve area, so they've always had ecological practices. Gorgeous Pinot Noir. It's probably a bit of a microclimate there too, is it? Or? It really is, yeah. And it's the oldest winery in Canada. Wow. Which is something people, I didn't know people that. don't know. Okay. Yeah. This is Mud House. It's a Pinot Noir from Central Otago in New Zealand. So we are going here for, again, those Pinot characteristics, but just a little bit of a lighter style because of the climate in New Zealand. And that's a delicious choice as well. And then, I know some people like to drink white no matter what they're eating, and so I've chosen Marques de Riscal, which is a Limousin, um, so it's from Spain, and this is Verdejo grapes mm -hmm. that have seen a lot of lees contact, so it means they a lot of contact with the yeast and oaking. So it's delivering kind of raisiny, a little bit of oxidized qualities, so it's going to have a fuller mouth feel, and for a white, it's going to stand up to a dish of meat and potatoes. Mm. And the meat price and points here are 16, 24, and 22. Mm. Okay, so Ryan Snodden is our guest today. Uh, he's a farm boy from Ontario. They farm beef. We've got a beef dish. And I just think I'm going to close the circle yep. and go with an Ontario red wine. I so this Pili Island Pinot Noir is... It's just speaking to me. Yeah, and it's close to his little heart, I would think. I bet. 
Thank you. Enjoy. Now we've mixed all our add-ons of bacon and our onions and our mushrooms. We're going to pour that nicely into our Idaho potato. A little bit more red wine sauce, I think. Get some out of here. Final nappe over there. A little wiping of the plate. A little garnish. And I'm sure Ryan and Carl are going to enjoy this one, aren't they? So let's go to the table. Some red wine. Mm -hmm. Thank you, um, sir. Have a taste, Ryan. Yeah. It uh, is very tender looking. Yes, it is. It's cutting beautifully. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's succulent. Mm. And that sauce, that burgundy sauce. Mm -hmm. With a little bit of cognac in there. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I can taste the, the forest from the mm -hmm. mushrooms. Yeah. Tastes just like Snodden Road to me. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah it's like bringing, the ba bringing back home to you, right? <laughs> Thank you very much. Great. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Great job, guys. Now, I want to give you something. You know, for um, half my life, um, I did what you're doing now, of course, as you know, the weather on here and now. And when I left, I created a little box of memories for myself just to remind me of what I did and uh, of the great times that I had. There's one thing that I... I have, which I want to part with. I think you should have it. Oh, okay. wow. <laughs> it's um, going to bring tears to my eyes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is the thermometer I used when I did my outside weather broadcasts. A lot of people will recognize this because it was on television literally hundreds of times. And uh, I would turn it on. If you go to the left, it's Celsius. If you go to the right, it's Fahrenheit. It's now 24.2 degrees in this house. <laughs> 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 so anyway... I want you to take it, oh, and wow. maybe you one of much. these days, uh, when you meet your successor, you can give it to him or her. Well, thank you very okay. much. <laughs> thank you. you. That's okay. very, very kind and, of you. And one more thing. This is a famous <laughs> yeah. thermometer. And one more thing. You know, because I did the weather outside, a lot of people wanted me to stay warm, so the viewers would send me uh, mittens, and they'd knit scarves for me, and sweaters, all that kind of stuff. These were made for me by a beautiful lady who's no longer around, uh, who lived on the Northern Peninsula, and she wanted me to have them, and uh, they have a trigger finger. See? Oh, that's handy. <laughs> so, and I know you're a hunter. Yes. So you can wear these hunting. But really, it's to remind you about um, the most important people in our business, and that's the viewers. Definitely. That's who we do everything for. It's the people out there. And so, take take these. Thank you. And I feel like these are. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> take these and remember who put us where we are. Well, thank you very much. Okay. That's a really very you're, kind. You're of welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, I will make sure I take uh, very yeah. good care of those. Yeah. And uh, you know, I love my job, but you're a living legend. So uh, <laughs> I I. Uh, can I tell I'm a quick story? I'm, I'm just glad I'm living. I have to tell a quick okay. story that a lot of the camera guys still tell at CBC. The Queen was here. That's right. Bonavista. Yeah. yeah that's well, right. Do you remember what year that yes. was? It was um, 1997, yeah. I think. Yeah. And uh, so the camera guys were all waiting for the Queen to come. And they were at the ready, and they heard this huge round of applause. And, and they thought, okay, the Queen's coming. So they turned the cameras on, and up over the hill came Carl Wells. <laughs> So this is it. There's, yeah. a, the, there's no it, way that yeah, I, can't uh, even, I can't even describe that because I was I I, I kind of freaked out because I'm like, what's the matter with these? And they started then they started chanting my name, Carl, Carl, <laughs> and it got louder. And all of these British reporters were saying, who the heck is that? Guy? Is, is that like the prime minister or something? Anyway, it's still a story that is yeah. told uh, within the building, and uh, yeah. it's a, a well, great story. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed the story. Anyway, much success to you. Thank young you man, very in your much. Career. Uh, it's been great having you on One Chef, One Critic. Thanks Cheers. for Ryan having Snodden. me. Folks, watch him tonight on TV. Coming up next, our guest chef is Michelle LeBlanc, pastry chef of Chinched, and she's going to show us how to make baked Alaska. Stick around. We have it's always a celebration at Spirit. There's musical comedy, of course, but we do food and special events from weddings to corporate seminars. Daily screech-ins. Spirit of Newfoundland, proud sponsor of One Chef, One Critic. 
If you want convenience, Marie's Money Mart is here for you. A one-stop shop for a variety of products, homestyle breads, sandwiches, plus check out our freshly baked artisan breads and single-serve desserts exclusively at our in-store bakery on Frecker Drive. With 25 locations, wherever you go, there we are. Raleigh's Irish Newfoundland Pub is a proud sponsor of One Chef, One Friend. Chinch Bistro, 7 Queen Street in downtown St. John's, may be small in terms of space, but it is a giant in terms of the impact it's had on the culinary scene in the city of St. John's. It's one of a handful of four-star restaurants in the city, and that's because of the locally sourced ingredients, the in-house made charcuterie, and their fabulous desserts and homemade breads. The co-owner of Chinched, uh, the pastry chef of Chinch Bistro as well is with us. She is Michelle LeBlanc, and it's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, what tempting treat are you going to make for us today, <laughs> Michelle? Uh, well, dessert always gets people. So yeah. uh, one of our more popular items on the menu um, is a homemade ice cream. Oh. So we always have homemade ice cream. We try to change up the flavors and the preparations on occasion. Mm. Um, right now, what we're doing is a baked Alaska, or our take on a baked, baked Alaska. Um, so today, I'll we're be going back to the 60s. Way now. back <laughs> in the day, yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah. it kind of started as a joke, actually. Absolutely, sort of yeah. Reviving yeah. old old recipes. If and you there's will. nothing wrong with that. No, and, and like that. I said, everyone. Well, loves I'll tell ice you cream. what, they're reviving old cocktails now. Exactly. Right? <laughs> I am all for it. Manhattan's are back. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so. How do we create it? At the restaurant, as I said, we do make our own ice cream, um, and the Baked Alaska is our take on that. Um, the ice cream machine is a little loud, and so today I just thought I'd bring the prepared uh, okay. product. Um, and this can be done at home without making your own ice cream in a more simple way, just having uh, having the ice cream from the grocery store That's and right, yeah. a little Swiss meringue for yourself. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so Let's today assemble. we're going to assemble a chocolate Baked Alaska. Oh my, my goodness. My goodness, look yeah. at our oh. That looks so rich. <laughs> it's it got does. a lot of chocolate that in it. That looks It looks like a so dark chocolate as well. It is. Yeah, yeah. 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 We try to buy as flavorful of a chocolate really as we can get our quality, hands on. Really good quality. Really good quality. Of course, you've, you've become an expert at making uh, chocolate, have, or I'm, making ice cream, yes, I should say. Yes, I've certainly got Having been lots the of experience. Uh, creative force <laughs> behind Growler's Ice Cream in uh, Fogo. Yes, yeah. yeah. So yeah. just a little on the middle of the plate there. Okay. A nice now, why did you put that little dab on the bottom? Because it'll hold it okay. as I'm piping the meringue. Right. Okay. A little yeah. trick, I think. A little it? trick of the trade. Heat. So Absolutely. So this is the fun part. It's actually my favorite. And this is a Swiss meringue, you said? It is a Swiss meringue. So it's twice the sugar to egg yolks. Mm -hmm. um, and then you uh, heat it over a double boiler until the sugar has melted nicely. Okay. Oh, thank you. And um, once the sugar has melted into the egg whites, we just put it in a um, stand mixer with a whisk attachment okay. and whisk it until it's nice and thick. And it's a great way, um, because most ice creams use egg yolk based, this is a great way to use the egg whites. Okay. So that yeah, way yeah. you're using the entire ingredient and you're not losing anything. Great for food cost. Great for food cost, which is yeah. critical to small businesses. Absolutely, course, yeah. yeah. How many seats do you have in the restaurant? We have approximately 40, depending on the seating arrangements. We can yeah. do up to 45, mm -hmm. but um, a you know, busy evening for us would be approximately 50 or 60. Oh, okay. Michelle, you've been president of the Restaurant Association of Newfoundland and Labrador. How has that experience been for you? It's been great, actually. I just stepped down from that position, so I'm currently the past president, past but president. still very okay. involved Thank you. Uh, that. with the association um, on many levels. Now the fun part. I get to blow okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> Look out, Carol. There we go. I was going to say, I saw um, Julia Child make a grilled cheese sandwich with a blowtorch once. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the first time I've ever seen a, a blowtorch used with food for food prep. We, uh, <laughs> we do like the blowtorch in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, certainly for the baked Alaska, traditionally it would be baked in the oven, of course. Yeah. Yeah. However, um, for, uh, for our purposes and 
sort of speed, if you will, during dinner service, uh, the blowtorch certainly helps. So here we just have a little homemade chocolate sauce, because mm -hmm. you know, the chocolate ice cream isn't quite enough. Yeah. No, a little rather, extra goes a long way here. You know, these, these, these 1960s desserts were always kind of OTT. Yeah. All the decadence you can get. Yes. Yeah. So just a little garnish a here on the plate, a yeah. swoosh, if you will. And then we've got some candied orange because orange and chocolate is such a classic absolutely, pairing. Absolutely, yeah. I bet you candied that yourselves, did we you? We do, yes, okay, absolutely. Yeah. A little uh, a little sugar, a little uh, vanilla. Mm. and uh, It goes a long way, doesn't it, goes, it? Yeah, you just need a little bit, but it's always fun to play with. Mm -hmm. A little extra flavor. And mint. And some mint to make it lovely. Fresh from the garden. Of course, I've got some growing on the windowsill at the restaurant and at home. Actually. Oh, very good. Yeah. And then here we've just got some little shortbread pig cookies. Oh my goodness. Because that's your logo. Yes. <laughs> you got to bring the pig to that's the dessert right. plate as yeah. well. You <laughs> we don't want to leave very anything Very good. Out. And there well, we are. That looks absolutely amazing. Very quick, very Thank simplistic, you. very flavorful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and like I said, because you can change the uh, the garnish and the ice cream itself, it's always fun. Um, you can play around with whatever flavor combinations mm. you like. Mm. And I'm just going to take a little bit from, from behind and see what that tastes like because yeah. I can't resist. This just tastes quite chocolatey. Yeah, before the ice cream. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> that's really good. Excellent, thank you. Thank you very much for no being problem. with us, Michelle. And that's it for this edition of One Chef, One Critic. I think you should pass me a spoon. <laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome. Is, is that what we're doing? That is what we're doing, yeah. Okay, sorry. Getting all confused. Hi everybody, I'm Carl Wells. No, no, that's wrong. No, 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 no! Hi everybody, and no, no, that's wrong too.